Welcome back to me filming in my bathroom because it's the only place I have a blank wall. Today I'll be ranking members of the VFD from a series of unfortunate events. If you do not know the whole story of a series of unfortunate events, if you have not read the books or seen the Netflix show all the way through, the movie does not count. The movie does not count for this because it is not the full story. Um, I am begging you to go either read the full series or watch the full Netflix series before watching this video because I'm going to be spoiling things that blew my mind. I'll be ranking VFD members by competency. Um, I will do the good side of the schism and the bad side of the schism. So the uh, volunteer fire department, the people who are ending fires and the people who are starting fires. Um, I will also be doing a middle zone of characters that I'm not 100% sure where they land, but I know that they're VFD adjacent. Just for the fandom's sake, I am reading the fifth book right now for the first time. So I've only read the first four books. I have seen the movie three times and I've seen the show all the way through twice. So most of my knowledge is coming from the show. I know that there are some inaccuracies and stuff from the show to the books or things they've changed. I know there's an entire character who I am putting on this list and who I like on this list who is not in the books. I'm okay with that. I want you to be okay with that. I'm going to be starting with the bottom ish area of, I don't know exactly. I don't have it like written down. Here's where I'm ranking them. We are filming off the top of my head. It should be fun. We're going to start with the bottom side of the good side of the schism. Then we're going to do the incompetent side. Then we're going to do the bad side and then we're going to do the good side. So that we end on a high note. Um, when I say we're doing the bottom side, here's what I mean. I have three characters here who are according to the Wikipedia, VFD members. In the Netflix show, from my understanding, it's like, oh, they're VFD, but they haven't like done anything. They haven't like joined up, gone on a mission, done anything really adventurous, stepped out of their comfort zone. They just showed up at a hotel to defend the Baudelaire's. So they get good person points for that, but they don't get like, oh, you competent because you know, they haven't done anything. We're gonna start with Mr. Jerome Squalor. Jerome Squalor. Okay, there's a lot of cowards in this series. There's a lot of characters, and we're gonna talk about some of them, and that will define their rankings by their cowardice, because we are ranking by competency, not by cowardice. There's a lot of adult characters who are just like cowards and can't stand up to like the bad guys, and that's kind of the point. Jerome Squalor is, how do I say this nicely? He's a person, he is a person. He does have a personality, he does stand up to Esme, like he doesn't put up with the abuse for forever. And he doesn't put up with it for the children, like he does speak up, but then it's like, oh, well I guess I can't really do anything to stop her. Ugh. Um, so he's not great, but he's gonna go about here. Notice how he's, you know, this is the lower side of the good. There is room for bad, for worse, on the good side of the schism. We will get to that. Um, I do think he does, you know, step up to the challenge and say some things against Esme and stands up for the Baudelaire's and tries to help them how he can. I think that's great. I think he gets points for that. Who does not get points for that? And again, I'm surprised that this person counts as a uh, VFD, but again, it was on the Wikipedia and that is Charles. Charles does not stand up to Sir to help the children. He has no spine. He's got nothing. He's, he's literally got nothing. Love this actor though. He was in Jumanji. He's gonna go down here. I'm leaving a spot here because I don't know where I'm putting everyone yet, so I need to not be moving things 6,000 times. Um, lastly, of people who are technically VFD members, but we don't really see them like doing a challenge or anything, I have um, Justice Strauss. She is the spot of sunshine in the bad beginning. She is, she's a shot of espresso. <laughs> she was like a shot of espresso. If she had the capability to help the Baudelaire's, she would. She just didn't know how. And then when she realized, no, I can do something, she was like, we hold in a trial. We hold in a trial. I love, I remember rewatching, I rewatched Series of Unfortunate Events this year for the, that was my second time the way through. So I like half remembered things, I'm like remembering as I go. And they're like, JS, who could JS be? And they're like, well, Jack Snicket is dead. It could be so-and-so or so-and-so. And then it was like Justice Strauss. And I was like, oh, what? Call back. She gets to go above Jerome because her competency level is a lot higher. <coughs> I'm dying over here. Okay, moving over to um, people who are in the middle, who I don't understand what side they're on or who maybe aren't really involved. Starting off with Fiona. She's a legacy. She is part of the VFD, but like she's also like pretty much just self-serving. As far as I remember, she's trying to find her grandfather, which 
that's honorable, but she's not like working with the VFD for the VFD. Like she says she's VFD, but like she's not really caring about the sugar bowl. She's just, I don't know. It feels very up in the air where her loyalties lie. Like I remember rewatching the show and being like, wait, is she a bad guy? Is she a bad guy? Like I've seen the show before. She's not a bad guy. She's not on the bad side of the schism, but I also feel like she's just like barely in the schism. We're going to put her here. This is the middle. And since this is our middle category, um, competent, great character, love that for her, love that she's also doubles as a love interest of sorts, love that for her, um, but, but, um, I don't really know, like, what her deal is. Um, next up is Phil. Phil. He's in the VFD. I don't remember him showing back up. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. I don't know where his loyalties lie. Like, I feel like he's a good guy, but I also feel like he could get, like, in with Count Olaf and just wouldn't even realize it. Um, his competency level is low, but what you gonna do? At least he's an optimist. Next is Ishmael. And, okay, so apparently, apparently, if I'm remembering Wikipedia correctly, so, you know, Lord bless me. I think Ishmael started the VFD, which means the schism is kind of his fault in some way. I don't, don't quote me on that. I, he started the VFD. And he was on the good side of the VFD, but then he, like, left. All I know from my memory of the show, again, the show made one episode out of the longest book in the series. So I don't know how much I'm missing. All I remember is that he was, like, brainwashing people to be happy. So he goes down here. Well, no. He goes above Phil. He goes above Phil because he was able to brainwash people. But also he's brainwashing people. So he goes below Fiona because I trust her more than I trust him with my drink, if you know what I mean. Last up, I have Fernald also known as Hook Hand Man. Now, he has some of that divergent canon from the Netflix series. So in the Netflix series, he, in order of timeline, not in order of how you receive this information, he worked with um, someone who's on the good side of the schism. His name was Lola. She was a showgirl. He was working with someone who was doing the thing for the fungus. He was trying to like, find the antidote to the fungus thing that ends up being like the crux of the last couple books um, or episodes in my case. Um, he was working with him, but he was like, this is more dangerous than we think it is. So he started the fire that burned down the lab and killed the people. And then he started working for Count Olaf, but he leaves Count Olaf when he finds his sister, the aforementioned Fiona. And I don't, and then they go off to find their grandfather or something. Okay. So, I, he was a good person. He didn't fully agree with Count Olaf, but he did those things anyways, which were bad things. Um, but then he becomes a good person again. So there's more good than bad, but he was bad. I feel like this is the one where it's like, well, he very clearly was evil. So he should be down here, but he is more competent than Phil. That's not saying much, but I'm going to put him up here. Cause I think competency, he was, he was competent on both sides of his job. Also, his little friendship with Sunny is cute in the show. Um, now to the fire starting side of the schism. <laughs> my mom, if she watches this video, or my dad, if he watches this video, are gonna be like, what does this mean? I'm gonna start with like the obvious. Um, bald man works for Count Olaf, so that just makes him kind of a part of the fire side of the schism. I can't remember a single thing this man ever did, so he goes straight to the bottom. None of the people helping Count Olaf are competent. That, they just automatically go down here. It's just ranking their individual competency. Um, so yeah, he just goes to the bottom. Now, um, also at the bottom is the person of indeterminate gender. That is their name. Should I just put them all? He gets a little bit higher than this dude. Cannot remember this dude for my life. A little bit higher is uh, the white women because Jennifer Coolidge in the movie, right? That's really funny. Um, because there's two of them, so they're kind of like less incompetent, but also in this episode specifically, the hostel, uh, hospital, I was like, oh, they're actually scary. So they get scary points for being up higher. They're twins, they're scary. I don't think they're twins in the book and they are definitely not twins in the movie because again, one of them's Jennifer Coolidge. Um, but twins are scary. I can say that. I have friends who are twins, right? Like, that's not weird. Half of the characters I've written are twins. And I just realized that the other day and was like, why are half of my book characters twins? Read my books. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about these two. We have the woman with hair and no beard and the man with beard and no hair. Uh, they are scary. 
every time they show up, I'm like, oh, like Olaf is scared. Wow. Um, also, they were his mentors, right? Not his parents. I feel like we never see them do anything, so I don't really know what their competency level is. That being said, I feel like they have a competency level. So they're just gonna go over Fernald, like that area. They're competent. I don't know how competent, but they're competent, and I believe in them to be scary. This is Ernest, E for evil, if I remember that correctly. He is one of the two pairs of triplets in this show. I feel like he's competent. Um, pretty competent. Like, I feel like he's fairly competent. He is a mile above the Olaf gang over here because he does have competency. I also feel like, again, he's there for like an episode or two. Okay, next up is Dr. Orwell. Um, she, super competent. She does her job well. Um, in the book, she like steps backwards into a saw and that's how she dies. And I'm like, first of all, you would hear it, stupid. Second of all, um, I can see why they changed that for the show because the show had a certain rating level and you can't show that. Um, in the show, I'm pretty sure she like gets pushed into like a giant fire furnace thing, a la Mrs. Lovett. She's one of the ones that I'm like scared of. Like genuinely, like she shows up and I'm like, oh, she knows what she's doing. Like she is a force to be reckoned with. I almost want to put her at the top, but also she did not last more than one book. I don't know. She is gonna go like here. She's like almost on par with them, but not quite. Next up, I have, it's Carmelita. Carmelita Spatz is the most annoying character to ever exist, ever. And that is not me being like, I as a reader hate her. It's like, I'm supposed to hate her. It's the characters you hate that you're not supposed to hate that are really annoying. So she's doing her job well. Um, definitely more competent than this dude. She's consistent, consistently the same. So she's gonna go above him for sure. The thing about Carmelita is it's like, she really just wants what she wants. And on the one hand, you're like, well, who are you to stop her? And on the other hand, you're kind of like, girl, like take a freaking chill pill, you know? Um, she's annoying, but I feel like, I feel like the annoying, like she doesn't have to be on this side of the war or the schism. Um, but she is, that's what's really annoying is it's like, she's not like evil and doing evil things for evil sakes. Like Ernest is, he's trying his darnest. He just, you know, dies in the fire. There's a lot of characters on the Wikipedia that it's like dies, presumably fire, hotel. And you're like, ah, cool. I like Carmelita's capability. I just also feel like she does not need to be there. You know, like she could get kidnapped by a giant eagle and the story would pretty much stay the same. You know, next. Esme Squalor. Lucy Punch, the woman that you are. Um, I adore her in this role. She, ooh, how competent. Cause again, I feel like these two are scary and competent. Like they've lasted this long in the business. I know nothing about them, but I know that they're competent. That's why they're up here. She's competent, but you know, she stepped into a saw, pushed into a furnace, like an idiot. Carmelita doesn't want to be here. Esme is just awful. Like she sucks as a person. She treated her husband like crap. She got a boyfriend while she was still legally married to Jerome. There's a whole lot going on there. I feel like she's the most competent. And I feel like if, like she's petty. The whole reason, her whole motivation. I forgot she was an original VFD member. I forgot she was like one of the team. I like, she is so petty over this one thing. She's going at the top, she's going at the top. Um, now, the moment you've been waiting for, Count Olaf himself. Um, also, just a heads up, I don't have uh, Violet, Klaus, and Sunny on my good members team because I don't feel like they ever really like joined up. Like they're just out here trying to, they're Katniss Everdeen just trying to survive. They don't want to be the emblem. They don't want to join the side. They want to do what's right, but they're not like, we're on the right side of the schism. They're like, dude, we're just trying to make it till Monday. You know, like they're, they're not on here. Count Olaf. I don't really know where to rank him because if I were evil, I'm not, and I'm not saying I would ever do this, but like if these kids kept evading me, I would stop playing nice, like kidnap the children, lock them in the basement until she turns 18 and then the money's out, you know, like some, there has got to be some way to keep them trapped. Like you have all these costumes, but you can't make a single bear trap. You can't Fred Jones this, like what is wrong with you? You know, his competency is not there. That being said, Reading book two, he is so scary. This dude is scary. 
And just for that, I mean, he beats out Carmelita. He actually wants to be evil. He is scary at times, but he's not competent. He is not competent. I think Esme is staying at the top. And also with the like last episode book having like the, oh, like he's a bad guy, but it's like because he's been hurt and he's had a hard life, like that kind of sob story, which I don't like, but also it feels justifiable almost in the way that it happens. Um, I don't know. Like he, I think him being that low makes sense. Like Esme never got better. She never had the moment where she's like, I want to be a good person. Um, okay. I'm gonna save the big ones for last. We're gonna talk through the VFD members who I think of as like they are pure VFD members. And we will talk about the guardians and then we will talk about a specific family. And then we will talk about the top tier. Straight up people who are like just VFD is their personality trait. We're gonna start with Olivia. Olivia Caliban, if you will. Um, I love Olivia. I don't know how people feel about Olivia. So I feel weird saying that. Um, love this librarian she is amazing and i also like i am a library kid so me saying i love the librarian character not surprising i think she's pretty competent i don't she's like she's like a stereotype where it's like girl takes off her glasses and now she can kick butt but like also i fall for the stereotype why am i mad i'm gonna put her here i think she's competent she has a good heart she's on the right side but she's new she's new here you know um ooh, in terms of competency we're gonna go through some of my favorites from the show. Larry, your waiter. I like Larry. I, he is always following, he's like one step behind from being like super competent, but he competent. Like, you know he's a spy and he's getting the job done. He's gonna go above Olivia for that reason. I think he's super competent. Um, this is uh, Jacqueline, the secretary. This is one of those things the show did to add in to like keep you invested. Hey, there's more going on here than you think there is. And that helped me as a viewer. So now as a reader, I'm just kind of like sitting back and enjoying myself. Um, so Jacqueline was Mr. Poe's secretary, but she's not really a secretary. She's a VFD member. We see her, we see Gustav, who I do not have on here because I forgot to get his picture. Um, Gustav would probably be like right here above Larry. He's, he's competent, but he died. He died in book one or episode two, book two. I love this lady. I love Jacqueline. She is competent. She's like, she shows up when you're not expecting it. She's gonna go above Larry. What is this dude's name? This is uh, Father Baudelaire. I forgot his name. It starts with the B. There's a lot of alliteration. Alliteration is awesome. Alliteration is awesome. I know nothing about him. I would assume he's competent. I mean, you can't have one incompetent parent and then have children like Violet, Klaus, and Sonny. So I'm assuming he competent, but I know nothing about him. And for this reason, I'm just going to stick up here. I'm assuming he is competent, but I don't know that man. Next up, I have two of the same picture. Shout out Max Greenfield. These are the other triplets of Ernest. Ernest gets his own picture so you know that he's evil because lasso. Lasso means evil. This is Frank and Dewey. Why is it always the secret twin? that has the alliteration name. Alliteration is awesome. Alliteration is awesome. I'm gonna put Frank with Justice Strauss. He is doing like the bare minimum. He's like, I'm a good guy, but like, tell us that you're like the good guy. Tell us what's going on. You know who does tell us what's going on? Dewey. He goes a little bit above Jacqueline. Uh, actually, you know, he's on par with Jacqueline. He tells the kids what's going on. He gets them caught up. She got them out of some perilous Parallel situations. She also got herself unstuck from a tree by pulling the tree up by its roots. Queen icon. I feel like he's like the one character that I literally was like, oh, maybe we'll actually have a happy ending. I forgot. Look away. Look away. There's nothing but horror and inconvenience on the way. Next up, let's talk about the guardians. We're going to start with Josephine. Aunt Josephine has let me down. I was talking about this earlier. We have a lot of adults who are just cowards and she is one of them because girl, especially again, haven't read this in the books yet, but in the show we have like the flashback and it's like, oh, well, she used to be courageous. She used to be courageous and she used to be this like big crime fighting woman. Like she was a, a member. She was an active participant in like stepping out in courage. And I don't think it's the same in the books. I think that's Netflix divergent canon because in the books, Violet says something like, oh, well, like, why do you even have a phone if you don't answer it? And she goes, oh, well, Ike used to answer it. So I'm like, okay, so even when he was alive, you were too cowardly to pick up the phone because you thought it was going to electrocute you. 
And like in the show, I feel like it was implied, and maybe this is just me taking it for myself, I feel like it was implied that she became a coward because Ike died. But no, this woman's just a coward. When I'm reading the book and I can feel I don't feel a lot of things in reading books. Like I like I like a good story. I like reading, but I'm never like emotionally affected. I almost started crying. She's literally can't even do the bare minimum. And for this reason, she goes, she's above Charles. Next up we have Uncle Monty. Um, Uncle Monty is competent. His only downside, his only downside is they're like, oh, we don't trust your assistant. It's Count Olaf. That's not how they talk, but you know. He's like, aha, it's not Count Olaf. He's from the, like he's, he knows something's up, but he's so far off from the danger. And this is the one where like Count Olaf is like threatening them with a knife. Like, <sighs> that's frustrating that Uncle Monty, but again, most of the adults in this are somewhat incompetent. That being said, he is the sweetest character we have. He is the sweetest guardian that the Baudelaire's ever have. He genuinely like cares about their interests and cares about their well-being. Like he takes what they say into consideration other than the Count Olaf thing. But like, they're like, hey, like, we're gonna go, like, we don't feel good, we're gonna go to bed, and he, and Olaf's like, no, they can't go to bed, and he's like, no, like, if the children are tired, they should go get some rest, like, that's not the exact conversation, I don't have that kind of memory, but he's the kind of person who would do that, and for that reason, I feel like he goes higher. I feel like his competency level is super high, especially as a guardian, and since that was, like, his main job in the series, I'm letting it pass. Except the Quagmire family, they are so important to me, because when I'm watching the show, and it's like, the parents might be alive. And the parents are being played by Will Arnett and Colby Smulders. I was like, oh, I'm watching this whole show. This is editing, Abby. I am popping in to say I cannot believe that twice this year I have made videos where I taped up pictures of Neil Patrick Harris and Colby Smulders. What are the odds? <laughs> um, we love Colby Smulders in this channel. Please watch my Ted and Robin timeline. Colby Smulders as Mrs. Quigley and um, Will Arnett as Mr. Quigley, top tier. We see them. And like all of these like dangerous like situations escaping and they're like, well, we have to get home to the children. You're right. We should be home by dinner. Like all these like whippy little one-liners. I love them. So sad that they weren't the Baudelaire's parents. Also so sad that they're dead now. Um, I think they are both super competent. Um, great characters. I'm gonna actually, how am I fitting all of these characters is the real question. I am gonna put them up here. Super competent, sad that they died, but you know what? Next up I have two of the Quagmire triplets because this is the photo I found. And this is Isadora and Duncan. I forgot Duncan's name earlier. I know someone named Isadora so I remembered hers. And then I was like, uh, it starts with a D and it's not Dewey because it's Dewey de la Monte or something like that. It's uh, Alliteration is awesome. Alliteration is awesome. Isadora and Duncan. Um, they are gonna go lower on the list because they're children and they never again they're never really like we're a part of the VFD we're gonna do like they help out like why would I not do XYZ why would I not help with but like also they're not really like involved with the plot that much like they're here for a couple books and then they're gone they get kidnapped and then they can't escape but they did leave messages they are they do have competency they just haven't done much to you know inspire me to be like wow VFD material they are top tier uh, if they weren't volunteers, I don't feel like they would be hired because they're children. Anyways, so they go above Justice Strauss because, you know, they have the competency level, they have the heart for it, but they haven't actually gotten involved. She got involved, but not in like a pew, pew, pew. And the reason I've done two of them, two of the triplets and not the third triplet, is because freaking Quigley Quagmire, um, he rocked this. He is actually doing stuff like concealing his identity properly and having the capability to escape and collecting the fungus and sending the teapot and i did not just say teapot when everyone knows it's a sugar bowl he's actually doing things that are advancing the plot i i don't i don't know how to explain it he has done more for the plot he also serves as a love interest which so does duncan and so does isadora i'm gonna put him like here He's like a little bit under his parents because he's a child. He has not been in this business as long. And I believe in their competency more than I believe in him. His, he's like 12. That's not saying much. Um, but I'm putting him above these two because those two died. And like also they kept getting themselves into these situations. Like he never got captured as far as I remember. I've only seen the show twice. Okay, finally, I'm going to get to the big four of the good side of the schism. Let me start with Jacques. Jacques Snicket. We meet him first. 
So that makes the most sense to start with him. Um, Jacques Snicket is super competent. And the only re his death, there's a lot of death in this where I'm like, oh, so she can do X, Y, Z, but she can't escape from falling into a lion pit or a tiger pit. Stuff like that. Larry boiled alive in a giant vat of soup. That's how he went out. What? Whereas like Jacques Snicket, it's like, no, they thought he was Count Olaf, so they killed him. It is stupid that they didn't fact check it. They're also called the Village of Foul Devotees. I don't think there's that many brain cells being spawned here. So his death makes the most sense. But I feel like his competency level is through the roof. I feel like he does a lot. I feel like him and his little taxi are great. He also is the reason that Olivia started and she wasn't just like, oh, I'm gonna show up for the trial and would be a member of the VFD. No, she showed up and she showed up. She went undercover. She had an accent. She flirted with Count Olaf. She took one for the team, dare I say. Um, so I feel like his competency level has gotta be like, I'm gonna put him just below Monty. Um, because I personally like Monty better as a character. Um, but his competency is high. I said I was ranking by competency, but this is also me just ranking my favorites. Um, next up, Kit Snicket. Some people don't like her. I don't, I think what I remember someone saying was it was the actress. I don't mind the actress. I've only seen her in one other thing. It's not Get Out. I saw her in Mithrigan, okay? She's one of those characters that I feel like it's just like... Feminism. The screen version is giving feminism. She's pregnant and she's doing all this work. Like she's doing her job. You can't be mad. That being said, losing the sugar bowl. Jacqueline would never. Jacqueline would never. She's gotta go below Jacqueline for that. Like, I feel like she's putting in more effort, especially with like, you know, she's expecting. Like she's putting in more effort than Larry. So sorry to Father Baudelaire, whose name I can't remember, but no, it starts with a B. I, he's probably more competent than Kit Snicket, but he's below her because I don't know anything about him. Now, to the final two, the two you are probably waiting for. I'm going to start with Beatrice. Beatrice Baudelaire. Also, their mom is the person all these books are dedicated for. Do you know how sad that is? First of all, it's sad enough that Lemony's out here being like, darling, dearest, dead. Your memory goes on, but your life won't. Like, didn't. That's crazy. And the fact that like, one of the first things we learn in the whole series is that this mother has died and the mother is the person he's the insane. Beatrice Baudelaire. Baudelaire is Beatrice. Beatrice is a Baudelaire. These books inspired me as a writer so much. They inspired the series I'm releasing in February and they make me want to write a different series completely because the series that inspired is nothing that I thought I would be writing and now I want to write something different and this complex but that is a story for a different day. Please go follow my Instagram if you're interested in my writing stuff. Speech is Baudelaire. We know she's competent. We know she can whistle with a saltine in her mouth. We know, like, she's got some skills. We do from, we know more about her from the little things that Lemony Snicket will say. He'll be like, my Beatrice could. Or she evaded death in a dragonfly costume. Or if only she had known, like, to keep an eye out for Olaf. Like, things like that. Like, I don't feel like we know a whole lot about her, so I can't say her competency is that much higher. That being said, we do know enough about her to know that she has the competency. I don't know that he has the competency. I am trusting that Father Baudelaire has the competency. Also, every time I say Father Baudelaire, my brain goes, Father Baudelaire has many sons, which is a lie. He only has one. Klaus. But like, we know she has the competency. That being said, the sugar bowl thing. I know we don't know the whole story. I know that there's theories. I know that the Netflix version like alludes to certain theories uh, about here's what's in the sugar bowl and all of that. Um, stealing the sugar bowl was stupid. Like they should have tried talking it out more. She should have just stolen it, especially since Esme is the kind of person that she is and literally became number one VFD Firestarter member because of the sugar bowl incident, whereas she ended up dead. I can't say it was the wisest move, especially since all of the unfortunate events it caused. But also like, I understand where her heart was at. I'm not 100% mad. She is gonna go on par here. Not to say Beatrice is a bad mom. She and her husband did send the kids to the beach because they could tell something was gonna happen. That being said, if you could tell something was gonna happen, how did you die? Last but not least, Lemony Snicket. Yes, I'm using the Jude Law from the movie picture because I think this is more of Lemony Snicket's character not seeing his face. Um, 
I do absolutely love Patrick Warburton though. Also when I read the books, I read it in his voice. So like literally top tier. Let me snip it. Okay, he's going there and let me explain why. He is involved. He was involved, he was a member. He has a lot going on. I feel like he's the old retired guy who's like, hi, right, I'll get back in the business. Like he, I feel like, you can take it one of two ways. He told all these stories and wrote all these stories because of his devotion to Beatrice, who remember said no and married someone else and had three kids. Or maybe he was genuinely doing it for the good. Like the story needs to get out there. This is important, which is what I believe is true. He didn't like stay. He wasn't like involved in the action. He didn't want to continue to be a part of this. That being said, this man's competency to stay, like the things we see him do in the Netflix show to stay out of sight and hidden and to move from one location to the next is amazing. The way he is able to get out of bed in the morning when Beatrice wrote a 600 page thesis on why she couldn't marry him. He's got more strength and stamina than I have. But yeah, we're gonna move him up. He's either the ultimate or he's not involved. And I feel like he's more towards here. So let me rank out loud where we are so we can end this video. Um, from worst to best and levels of competency. On the bad guy side, we have all of Olaf's cr cronies. I have the bald headed guy at bottom because I don't remember him at all. I have the person of indeterminate gender in the middle of the cronies because I, he, I remember him as a character, but I don't remember him doing anything. The white ladies get to be a little bit higher because they're scary. Next, and by a mile, we have um, Ernest, the triplet, because he did do stuff. He did do stuff. Next, we have Carmelita Spatz. I don't like her. I don't feel like she's here for the evil team, but since she's on the evil team, she is gonna be as annoying as she can be. So she gets to be this high. Next up, we have Count Olaf. He is a scary dude, but also kind of like a child. I feel like he's competent, but also shouldn't really take 10 books for you to catch them. Like, come on, dude. If you're competent, you're competent. Next up, we have Dr. Orwell. She is scary. She does her job well. Her death is stupid. Uh, next, we have the woman with hair and no beard and the man with beard and no hair. Because um, I feel like they're actually scary. Uh, they look like they've been in the business long enough. Am I basing this off of looks? Maybe. They look like they've been in the business long enough to have the competency. Also, the fact that Count Olaf, who literally does not care about anything but the Baudelaire's money, cares about their opinion and is scared of them, speaks. As my squalor gets taught because she is the most vain person ever and that makes her super competent at this job. She wants to be liked. She will do anything to be liked. She would even drop Olaf to be liked. And Olaf is the one who likes her, sort of. I don't know. Um, in the middle area of, I don't know where, really where they stand, the bottom we have Phil. I don't feel like he's competent. That's just my opinion. Next up, Ishmael. I feel like he's competent because he could drug people, but I don't like him. Next up, Fiona. I don't really feel like she's in it, like her heart's in it, but I feel like she is doing things and she has like a heart that's more on the good side than the bad side, so she gets higher. Uh, Fernald gets top billing for the middle indeterminate side of the schism people because he was on the good side and he kind of returns to the good side but again he's with Fiona so it's not really like the good side is more like the better side um but he was evil and he did do bad things but he was competent like Olaf is making fun of him but like he did his job to what Olaf said for the most part also I like his relationship with Sunny they are a cute little buddies kind of team think that's great okay on the good side of the schism at the very bottom we have Charles dude do something Next up, we have Aunt Josephine. I feel like she's like capable, but completely unwilling and too in her head about it. I can't relate, I've been there. Next up, I have Jerome Squalor. At least he stood up to Esme. Dude, thank you for the bare minimum. Next, I have Frank, the triplet, and um, Justice Strauss. Justice Strauss did organize the whole trial. Um, the trial was just kind of a stupid idea and it didn't end up really working out in their favor. Um, and then Frank also like you're doing the bare minimum and you're actually helpful. Next I have two of the Quagmire triplets. I have Isadora and Duncan. I feel like they would be competent, but they haven't actually like done anything to like get in the game. Like, you know, um, next up I have Olivia Caliban. She has gotten in the game. Girl, good for you. Hope you're having fun. She has the competency. She was 100% willing and she was undercover. So I feel like she's got some sort of skin in the game. Father Baudelaire. So sorry I forgot your first name, dude. I did remember it for a while. Bertrand, maybe? Um, he, I feel like he had to have been competent, but I don't really know anything about him. Next, I have Larry, your waiter. Um, love Larry, think he's great. Um, but it is one of those things where it's like, well, why didn't you do more? Why didn't you actually like tell the kids what was going on? 
you were there, you could have kidnapped them in like a helpful way. I don't know. Next up, Kit Snicket. Girl, if you can do that while pregnant, props to you. That is my only reasoning here. Next up, I have Dewey Delamont um, because I feel like he's capable and he did his best to help the children in the way that he could without like risking giving everything away. I think that's great for him. Next, I have Jacqueline. Jacqueline I like. I think she's super competent, super girl boss. Um, I don't remember how she died, but I know for a fact she is dead. Um, I like her. She does great. Again, she gets the plot moving. Um, but she's also not in the book, so she can't really go any higher, even if it's like, I think she's perfect, which I don't. Beatrice, okay, stupid, don't steal the sugar bowl. And if you do, don't do it while she's like in the room. Try to get away quicker. Come up with an escape plan beforehand. Um, but also, like, again, her competency level is great. And... Lemony's devotion to her says something about her without us having to know anything about her. You know, she gets to stay. Okay, next up I have the Quagmire parents. I don't put them above Quigley, but we're gonna get to that. We see them doing some cool stuff. We see them devoted to their children. But again, if you were able to help the children escape, why couldn't you also escape? It's one of those things where like, it's implied that the parents knew beforehand, like before the fire was starting 100%, they knew because, you know, Beatrice and father escaped. So like, I don't know. For the top super spies that they are, I don't see how they died like that. Next up, I have Lemony Snicket. I think he is great. I think he is completely competent. I don't think his heart is completely in the continue the fight. It is more in the protecting the legacy and protecting the story and getting the word out there, which is also good. That is a good thing to do. But for the sake of my argument, he's not there. Next, I have Quigley. I know I said he was under his parents. He's not. He's above his parents now because he's like so young. And he managed to keep his identity a secret to like not tell people that he was still alive and to like get information. He is out here putting his life on the line and he does not have to be. And I respect him for that. Um, next up, I have Jacques Snicket. I think he is super capable. I think he is the only VFD member who died under reasonable circumstances. Stupid. But the people were stupid, not the circumstances were stupid. It's the Kermit and Constantine thing where Kermit's wearing the mole and everyone's like, well, no, you're Constantine. Like, no, he's not. But also... I understand the mistake, you know? Um, I don't know why I resorted to Muppets there. And at top billing, we have Uncle Monty. Rest in peace again. I think it was stupid that he didn't believe the kids and they said it was Count Olaf. Um, but I think at that point, like, he had hidden the eye tattoo. So it was, like, more reasonable than, like, Poe not recognizing him when Poe had seen him before. Although it's also implied that Monty knew who Count Olaf was beforehand. I am rambling. Um, this is my... In definitive ranking. I have not read all the books, so my opinion does not matter here. Let me know what you think. Um, wh who is your favorite character? Who is, do you think is the most competent? What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Um, please yell at me in the comments below.